I will bless those who bless you. God says to Abraham, oh, yeah. I will curse those who curse you. Yeah, yeah. In real time. In real time. God keeps his promises. Yes, yes. That, that's true as a nation and that's true individually. You know, you bless Israel. I've never met anybody who blessed Israel and wasn't blessed. No. I never met anybody who hated the Jewish people and wasn't cursed. Yeah. Never. Yeah. And, and, I'm, and, and, and this, is, this has held up from the days of Egypt to the United yeah. States of America. Yeah. Like clockwork, yeah. our God is real. You know, we, you know, one of the things is we're living in a time when the world is trying to dismiss God and say, oh, that's old, we, we can move on right. from that. That's one of the reasons I believe this is here because no, God, your God is in church. The God of the Bible is alive and well. Well, yes, you have had an interesting few months. A newborn baby. Yes, Mishael. Yes, yes, Who's seven months old great. right now. Seven yep. months old. Yep. And you've also given birth to a new book. <laughs> yes. And if you've written Not a book, folks, you know it's kind of like that <laughs> yes, process. It's like you know. a birth. Uh, but now it's here. Yes. And it, it, it's upon us. The Oracle. It's groundbreaking. It's your fifth book. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a runaway bestseller, already shooting up the charts on Amazon even before the release date. Yeah, by God's grace. So people yeah. are wondering, Yeah. what is the Oracle? <laughs> what, what is it all about? What is the mystery of the Oracle? Tell us a little bit about yeah, it. Yeah, the, the Oracle, this has to be the biggest mystery I've ever, ever committed to print. Um, it is a mystery so big, it, it, it has everything from Moses to Mark Twain, from Jeremiah to Donald Trump. Um, it is the mystery behind the past, really the, fu the present, the current events right now, um, the future, what is yet to come, um, so exact of the Lord that it, it gives exact dates, as you, it gives exact times when things must happen. Um, and you know, this was, this, was, this was two years in the making. I've been blown away for two years. And I have uh, the notes, I have about 3,000 pages of notes. And I had to get it, the book is not <laughs> that big, wow. but I had to get that all in there. Um, it, is, it is the Jubilee and Mysteries, which is the mystery of the Jubilee, but how everything in our time is, is, being, uh, is being, basically, it's be, behind this is this mystery of God. The God of the Bible is just as alive now and behind everything and the mystery of our lives, behind the plan of our lives, because it all has affected our lives. It's all about our lives. Um, also that there are these appointed words that God gives. He gave to Israel, the Jewish people to read uh, every Sabbath. But the thing is, they open the scrolls. But the thing is, when they open the scrolls, amazingly what I saw is that, that what they read comes true in the world when they read it. I mean, that's been happening at key moments. Um, and then there's this cycle of years that every time at, in this God cycle, something gigantic happens prophetically, yeah. even up to our time right now. It is behind everything, the elections, everything. Yeah. So it was so big. I mean, for, for instance, some of the mysteries um, are the stranger, the mystery of the stranger, yeah. a man who has to appear in the Middle East before the end times as we know it can begin. And it happens. Um, the Jubilee in code, an ancient in the ancient law of Moses is a code in the Hebrew that gives the exact year that Israel will return to the world. I mean, you know, the mystery of Donald Trump. I mean, you know, that mean, I mean, I mean, where it's explaining everything that is part of this, um, and even a scripture that was chanted on the day he was born. <laughs> that that explains everything. I mean, amazing. The the you know things that the you know, mysteries that have been hidden for for thousands of years in yeah. in the desert and all these things. Um, and the mystery of the end times. Really, the blueprint of the end times. Um, there's something called the dark jubilee, which is something about what's happening in the world every moment. It's the past, the present, and it's the ultimately, it's eternity, it's everything. I mean, it's gigantic, because God is gigantic, and, and it's really an explosion of the reality of God. All in one incredible book, ladies and gentlemen. I'm telling you, it is phenomenal. And you and I were talking a bit before we came out, Jonathan, this is your first book. You've had five, this is your fifth. Yes that is specifically focused on Israel. Well, it, Israel is the focus of the Bible. I mean, it, yeah. it's everybody. Whatever happens in Israel touches the world. The story and, of the Jewish people. And, yeah, and if you're born again, you are a spiritual Israelite. Yes. So this is part of, this is your nation. But it, it's the key of everything. So it's Israel, but it's the whole world because what happens there? Listen, Messiah is not coming again until these things happen in Israel. So it's about, this, it's about the coming of the Lord. It's about salvation. It's about everything. But it's the first one. It's, it's a global, it's a global uh, stage centered on Jerusalem. Yeah, and folks, for a gift of any amount, you can own the Oracle for a gift of any amount to TBN. The Oracle is yours. Get it before everyone else has it. It's flying off the presses. I'm telling you, this is a hot, hot new release. Jonathan Kahn, 
every time he brings something new to the table. We sat here about two years ago and talked about your last bestseller, The Paradigm, the Paradigm which yes. is very focused on America, yes. President yes. Trump. But Israel, I believe, for mm. such a time as this, yes. Jonathan, with yes. everything that's going on. Yes. Now, people might say, okay, you broke down what the, the Jubilee and mysteries are for us. Uh, what's an oracle? Some people might say that you are an oracle, my friend, a prophet, a seer. Well, the, the yeah, I didn't say this that the oracle, like the harbinger, because there's so much kind of being being given out. Um, I was led to do it like I did the harbinger with a. There's a narrative. There's a story. It's all real. What happens? But there's a narrative. A man goes to seek a man called the oracle. The oracle is is someone who reveals divine things. So it's of God. So he, every so the oracle is opening up all these mysteries continuously, um, and all the mysteries of God. And it happens through these visions. And so there's these seven doors that are opened up of revelation. And it, behind each door is like eight streams of mysteries. But we, we will open the doors. I mean, we'll, we'll probably have one Let's mystery. Let's open up the first door. Why right. not? What was the event that sent the end time mystery, uh, end time prophecy into motion? This is like a secret. It's a secret to the world, but it's amazing. God says when Moses, in his last, uh, his last uh, words to Israel, he tells them that, it, that in the end times, God is going to gather them back to the land. It will be the end time. He's the first one to talk about the end times. And he says, he says, but before that happens, he says, there will be a turning among the Jewish people. He says, in your nations, when you're in the nations, you will turn back to God, and then I will bring you back to the land. Now, there's going to be a massive turning at the end. We know that, a national turning. But could there have been a spiritual restoration before the physical restoration that triggered everything. Well, it's a secret event, but amazingly, in the 19th century, Jewish people start turning to back to Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus. They start turning. And the first gathering ever of Jewish believers since the book of Acts together happens in London, kind of a secret event, happens, and that is going to trigger everything right after that happens. They gather together, and they're even prophesying that Israel's going to come back to the world, going to come back in the land. Right at that, the year is 1867. This is going to be the first jubilee of restoration. Which is and key for we, this we, book. It's going, to, it's going to determine everything that happens after that up to our day. Um, everything. So it happens then, and the other thing is, when does it happen? Could it actually foreshadow the future, the spiritual? Well, they, the event takes place on May 14th, the day that Israel will come back in the world in the next century. And so right after that, all these things start taking place in the land. All the, right after that, it's a crucial year, strange things start appearing. A man with a measuring line, it's an ancient sign of the Bible appears. We can't get into it. But all these things happen. Israel, the Jewish people start coming back. They start planting the land, but it all begins in that year. Everything. Um, 1867. It, 80, that's the first Jubilee. In that year, also, there's a, you know, in the Jubilee, it says, the land will return to the people. You know, we'll turn to the owner. And the Jubilee is every 50 years. Every 50 years, yes. We just had one in 2017. Yes, which, <laughs> yeah, we're going to get to it. was a biggie. Yeah. yeah. So, so the thing is that, so, so the land returns to the owner. Well, well, in that year, for 2,000 years, Jerusalem, biblical Jerusalem was hidden, was in the sand. That year, it's uncovered to the world after 2,000 years. That same year, the Ottoman Empire, Turkish Empire, they're never, they're, they don't want to give back the land to Israel. Yeah. But that year, they're, they're going bankrupt. It's a Muslim empire. And they, they start releasing the land and that Jewish people start buying the land. Just like in the Jubilee, it all begins that year. And actually, a lot of the things begin within days of that kind of secret meeting of Jewish people the first time in 2000 years. Yeah, in 1867, uh, Jonathan mentioned Mark Twain. There's a Mark well, Twain link I, to we that didn't year. We There's didn't identify him, but yeah, the stranger, Moses says a stranger will come to the land and he'll do things and he says exactly what he'll say. It was fulfilled. It was Mark Twain. He oh, actually awesome. fulfilled what Moses said as he said it. And right after that, everything started happening. But he, he left his ship just like within less than 30 days from that secret meeting. Yeah. And by the way, you mentioned Moses talking about the end times. A lot of people may not realize that Moses did talk about the end times in the book of Deuteronomy. He's the first one. Yeah. And that's where the prophecy is. Yeah. That's, it. that's exactly it. Okay, so the first yes. door is opened. Yes. It's set in 1867. Yes sets the end times prophecy in motion. Yes. What happens we, next? Well, if you count, 50 years, we're only gonna, we can only touch, I mean, again, I'll count one mystery with each door. Um, yeah. and, I, and I'm doing another, I'm doing another TBM praise, and, and about 90% of what I do there, will, I won't even mention, I can't mention this there because there's so much stuff. And yeah. even then we won't touch it. So, the thing, am I excited? <laughs> okay. Are you excited? Okay, so God is amazing. New so, York City, are you excited? For Jonathan Conklin, <laughs> <laughs> 
how God is in charge of everything. Count 50 years. It takes you to the 50th year. Jubilee is the year 1917. Anything happen? The whole world explodes. The mystery now shakes the whole world. World War I. You have the Ottoman Empire on one side, British Empire. The Ottoman Empire has the land, but they're not giving it back. You have the British Empire on the other. They just had a revival. They have a love for the Jewish people. God, they both come into the war. One is about to crumble. The other is about to come to the land. Yeah. And in that time, as the year of Jubilee approaches, the British government, they have a government that actually doesn't want the Jewish people to go back. All of a sudden, they crumble in the last, in the end of the year, and then God raises up these two people who are raised on the Bible. One is David Lloyd George, who becomes prime minister. The other is Arthur Balfour, the, the farm minister, who's a believer, who's passionate, he loves the Lord. They both love Israel. God lifts them up at the exact moment for the Jubilee, and in that year, they're going to issue, England's going to issue the Balfour Declaration, which is going to give the land promised back to the people. Jubilee, everyone shall return. They open up the land for the Jew, not the nation yet, but for the people to return. And yet they don't have the land yet because the Ottoman Empire does. But in the same year, another Christian who didn't want to be a soldier, General Edmund Allenby, enters the land and for the first time in 2,000 years, Jerusalem is liberated yeah. for the Jewish people in the year of Jubilee. Yeah, and if you've crossed, if you've been to Israel, and you better be, but if you've crossed from Israel into Jordan, you have crossed the Allenby Bridge, named after this man. General yeah. Allenby. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. So that now there, there is a, there is a, there was a, a scripture. See, the other thing is these appointed amazing words. When they issued the Balfour Declaration to say the Jewish people, it's their land. They can go back. They can go home. There was a scripture appointed in the ancient scrolls at that, at that moment that was being read all over the world, chanted all over the world. What was it? It was God saying to Abraham, I have given you this land and to your children forever. Genesis and it, 12. And as the, exactly. As they're doing it, it's being fulfilled. And on the day when, when Allen B's soldiers entered Jerusalem, this after 2,000 years, they entered Jerusalem. Uh, it, it's a day, there's a day on the Jewish calendar where they celebrate the regaining of Jerusalem from ancient times. It's called Hanukkah. It's when the occupier had to leave and they restored Jerusalem and the temple. Well, the day they entered Jerusalem after 2,000 years, there are lights. The Jewish people are lighting lights all over the world. It's Hanukkah. Yeah, the festival it's, of lights. It's the day that celebrates the liberation of Jerusalem yeah. and it was already planned. And there's a scripture for that Sabbath and it says this. You know, this, is, this is the scripture that Jerusalem is brought back. It says, God will, God will take possession of Judah yeah. and he, God says, I will again choose Jerusalem. Yeah. I mean, only God can do that. We are there. Only God. Only God Throughout this it. book, folks, actually, it's called The Oracle, The Jubilee and Mysteries Unveiled. It's hot off the presses. Jonathan Kahn's latest blockbuster. You can buy it for a gift of any amount to TBN. But I was saying to Jonathan, this is a faith-building book. Uh, I'm a believer, but reading it, I read it, Jonathan, in a sense of amazement and wonder about how God is involved in the, the affairs of individuals, of nations, yeah. and how he's using Israel to kind of tie it all together in these times we live in. It, it, exact Amazing moments, faith exact builder. things. Yeah, that's what I'm hearing yeah. from. Only a few people have read it yet, you know. Yeah. But believers that, that, you know, they're being blown away by God. That's yes. what it's about. But also to give to unsaved people, you know, because, because that's what it's about. And that's the thing, because when you combine... Biblical truth, folks, with irrefutable historical truth, that's an unbeatable combination. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what you've done in the book. Tell us about the lost city. Well, the lost city is, is Jerusalem, is that city after buried for 2,000 years. The, yes. the biblical Jerusalem, and a guy stumbles over a tunnel, a yeah. uh, shaft, and it comes back. Everything in the year of Jubilee. Every Jubilee, there's another yeah. restoration. Every, everyone builds on the next one. And another thing, I know we'll get to one point, but there's a mystery where we're called the Jubilee people, that every 50 years on that Jubilee, a child is born who's going to play the central role in the next Jubilee when they turn 50. I mean, it, uh, up to up to today. I can't tell you until I talk to the person. I can't reveal who that <laughs> one, the last one is. But it goes all the way back. I'll, maybe at one point, I'll I'll, yeah. I'll share who these people are. Uh, before we continue, I have to ask you. Uh, where do you get your research? Do you do all of your own research? It's so intricate, yet so easy to understand. That's not a problem, but the research, I just marvel. Whenever I read your books, Jonathan, wow, where did he get this incredible information? I never heard anything like this. <laughs> Downloads from the Holy Spirit, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never heard anything like it. Yo, it's the Lord. It's the Lord. I, I'm the first one to be blown away by it. You know, yeah. I'm the first, I, I, I don't, yeah, all the Lord, yeah. no glory to the Lord. I couldn't do it. If I, if I had a, 
try to reproduce, you know, the, the, like the harbinger or the paradigm. I couldn't yeah. reproduce it or this because it just comes like this. It's like some, God overwhelmed me. I was, in a, I was ministering in another nation. He just overwhelmed me with these things about the Jubilee. And then it's like the next thing leads deeper and deeper and deeper. And then, and then some, he put something on my, I, my mind. I don't know if it's true or not. I go to the web and there it is, you know. So yeah. it's, it's God. I mean, this is all, this is the Lord. I believe he, it's for such a time as this. Yeah, I know how that is. You're, you're in bed. You get those downloads. You bed. jot it down. I don't want to forget this. Uh, God, I, you're jotting it down. I have my, I have my laptop in bed, so I'm okay. Yeah. You know. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my wife's asleep. I've written a lot of good things in bed. Yeah. But, but, but God has given a lot of things in bed, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I hear you. I've been there. Take us through. Yeah, the okay. third door. I think we're, are we on the second door I think we're now? on the third door. There's seven doors, by the way which profoundly impact the lives of everyone in this room and yeah. across the world watching right now. Let's walk yeah. through the third door. Yeah. What do the third we door is a different jubilee, which actually, actually the, the man who founded Israel, he's Theodore Herzl, and he actually made a prophecy, and he wrote down a prophecy, and he said, the whole world will know about Israel in 50, 50 years, Jubilee, 50 years. Jubilee. Every and, and, 50 years, remember. And, and that's a different cycle, but when you, you, when you look at the date that he wrote that, it comes out to the date that Israel was voted back into the world in this play, in New York, in New York here, yeah. was voted back into the world, prophetic event. And actually when I looked at, I looked at the resolution that brought Israel back in the world, the plan, and it has a date on it. It's September 3rd, which by the way is also the release of a book, which we didn't plan it. But September 3rd, <laughs> not a plug, <laughs> nobody planned it. September 3rd, and when you look back, when I look, that was the day, when you look back 50 years when Herzl wrote the prophecy, it was September 3rd. Yeah. It was the exact day, it was 50, 50 jubilee to the day. But on that day, in this city here, where we are, they voted Israel back into existence. The UN. You know, the UN voted Israel back into existence. But could there have been an appointed word for that day from God that was appointed from ages past to be read as the scrolls were opened all around the world? Well, the thing is, here's the thing, you know, uh, amazing, first of all, the scroll, the word that was appointed, by the way, it was voted back on a Sabbath, Saturday, so that means it's the exact day of the reading of the word. At, at, and so, they open up the scrolls, and you know what it is? You know, that, this was when, this is about the return, this is Jewish people, the son, the children of Jacob, returning to the land. What the, what the portion, the appointed word they chanted was the return of Jacob from exile to the land, the father of Israel. And, you know, when, they came, when the Jewish people came back, there was still a conflict. They divided, the UN divided the land between the Arabs and the Jews. They are brothers, you know. You know. Uh, but Jacob the, and Esau. Jacob and Esau. The appointed word was, that, was Jacob coming back and fearing Esau was going to kill him which is Israel was preparing. Yeah. But then nobody knew the, the name of this nation because they had no name. There was no name for the Jewish until just a few days before it came back uh, in May, in the next year, okay, uh, five months later. Nobody knew it, but the, uh, God did. That shouldn't surprise us, God did. The appointed word all over the world on the day Israel was voted with no name said, you shall be called Israel. Wow. <laughs> the first time Israel is mentioned in the Bible. Jonathan, absolutely amazing. Folks, as you can see, this book is a faith builder to see how God operates in the affairs of men in nations and kingdoms from the very beginning until today and in the future. In the future, There are yes. more doors oh, yeah. which we will walk oh, yeah. through together with Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. But up first, you can get this book, The Oracle, The Jubilee and Mysteries Unveiled for a gift of any amount to TBN. And we have for you right now a closer look at what the Oracle is all about and why it matters to you. Take a look. Is it possible that an ancient mystery lies behind the events of our world, the leaders of our times, and the course of our lives? Jonathan Kahn, the New York Times bestselling author of The Harbinger, The Paradigm, and The Book of Mysteries, now releases his newest book, The Oracle, The Jubilee and Mysteries Unveiled. In The Oracle, Khan opens a mystery so big it has determined everything from the rise and fall of world empires, to world wars, current events, end time prophecy, and so much more. Could an ancient prophecy and a mysterious ordinance given in a Middle Eastern desert over 3,000 years ago be determining the events of our day? Could some of the most famous people of modern history and current events be secretly linked to this mystery? Even a modern president of the United States. Could this ancient revelation pinpoint the events of our times, down to the year, or even the day? Is there a master plan affecting the entire world and altering the course of history? The Oracle will take you on an epic journey through seven doors of revelation and visions. 
to open up the mysteries of the stranger, the lost city, the man with the measuring line, the day of the lions, and more. As with Khan's other works, the mysteries of the Oracle are absolutely real, stunning, and life-changing. See the world as you've never seen it before and discover what the future holds. You know, Jonathan, I would agree with that very well done trailer, by the way. It's really grabbed you. This book is unlike anything I've ever read. Uh, I focus on Israel on the Watchmen show here on TV, and I focus on Israel. I'm in Israel every few months, and I, I knew a lot of this information, but there's a lot that I didn't. Yes. And, and not, I thought, I know, I know everything about Israel. No, no, no. <laughs> Read the Oracle, and you will be schooled. I'm telling you that right now. And the way it's put together, and everything's linked together, the years, the dates, yes. It's completely unique. It's going to be groundbreaking. I don't say that lightly, not only in America, but around the world. And it can be yours for a gift of any amount to hear uh, to TBN. So let's get into it. We are okay. still in the third door. Third door, yeah, we're just touching on the third door. Now remember folks, we started 1867. We moved on to 1917. We're going every 50 years, right, with these Jubilees. 1867, 1917, now we are up well, to... Well, this is the other one from Hertz. This is the other Jubilee from Herzl, 50 okay. years. So this is, we're at the time of the birth of Israel, which is prophetic. Listen, Jesus cannot come again until Israel is back in the world. And the Bible said, you know, when I was an atheist, that blew me away. To just, that God said it, he said everything he said is coming true. That Israel's in the world every day, you've got a sign from God, that your God is real. And so here, so, so there's something in that, in that door called the day of the scrolls. Yeah. And here's, here it is. Uh, you know, whenever God does something, he does it by his word first. Before he did the universe, his word. Before Israel came, they came to the land, they came to Sinai, got the word. Before they came back, the word's restored. And even before Israel came in the modern times, you have the word of prophecy around for 2,000 years before it happened in our lifetime. So the word co always comes from, God always restores the word linked to the restoration of Israel. So now here's the thing. A, a little shepherd boy or a shepherd boy is following his goat. Uh, he ends up going into a cave, throws a rock in the cave, hits, hits, crashes pottery, looks in there. He finds these ancient scrolls that he brings the scrolls, yeah. and brings it to a, to a, a shop. Um, and now what is this? This is the Dead Sea Scrolls. Now, the Dead Sea Scrolls has the Bible in it. It's the oldest Bible in the world. This is 1947. Th this is 1947, which is crucial. Why? Yep. It just happens after 2,000 years. When? Why? Because Israel's coming back the next year. Yeah. The Word and then the nation. So he restores the word. So, and this is something, you know, people said, oh, the Bible was written. Let, well, it, it went from the Middle Ages, that was the oldest, to the Dead Sea Scrolls. So God is upholding his word. And particularly the, the, the book of Isaiah, which is filled with prophecies about Israel coming back into the world. Yeah. But here's the thing. This one guy gets it. They give, they, you know, they give the scrolls to this one guy who's a professor in, in Jerusalem named Eleazar Sukenik. He gets it and he starts opening up the scrolls on one. He brings it back to his apartment, opens up, and he can't believe what he's seeing. It's blowing him away. He never saw anything like it. He's opening it up and it's being revealed for the first time after 2,000 years. That same night, his son is running to, into his room, giving him news of something and giving reports from the radio because the night that the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Word of God was, oh, was now here restored, Isaiah, all that, on that same night, Israel was voted back into the world. Wow. <laughs> Only God. Only God. <laughs> you mentioned the little boy. Uh, and the Oracle. This it, it is fiction, quote unquote. Well, the it, book, it's it's all it's but it's framed in that. It's framed it's just like in that. the Harbinger. Like but, the Harbinger, yeah, but but be very familiar to people in a great way because you're on an, an adventure. adventure. You're yeah. on an adventure. That's how I felt. Just the settings. <laughs> we're in the, yeah, desert. in the desert. We're in a cave. We're, in the, yeah, yeah. we're at an oasis with yes. the Oracle. This mysterious. Div, you know, divinely inspired figure. Very cool stuff, my it, friend. Yeah, that, that's the way, because when I did The Harbinger, when I first yeah. wrote The Harbinger, I wrote it completely nonfiction. Yeah. And the Lord just said, okay, you finished, now rewrite the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> because God uses parables and he uses pictures and yes. images to reach more people. So the delivery system yes. is that, but you're going to be, it's filled with everything it's filled with is real. Yes. And now, now even, even America, we've, we've all grown up, many of us, grown up in America. We've been blessed to live in America, the, the head nation in the world that, with power and all. Well, even America, and its rise is part of the mystery. Because if you look at it, you know, you had the Ottoman Empire have the land, but they're against God's purposes here. Sure. So God says, okay, you're coming down. Yeah. So they come down. And then Britain says, we're gonna be for this, and, and the Jewish people are gonna go back. God lifts them up to the pinnacle of their power, the British Empire. Mm -hmm. Then in between the two wars, England turns against yeah. this, 
And all of a sudden, overnight, the British Empire collapses. Right. So God has to have another power to raise up. That is the United States of America. So America rises up just at the moment that Israel needs it. God, all the, even our nation is part of the mystery. Everything we've experienced is part of the mystery of God. For New York City, where we're sitting right now, that's good news, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that we keep blessing Israel. Yes. And to New York, where we're at right now and around the world, this really lines up, I think, Jonathan, when I was reading. Genesis 12, 3. Yeah. I will bless those who bless you. God says to Abraham, oh, yeah. I will curse those who curse you. Yeah, yeah. In real time. In real time. God keeps his promises. Yes, yes. That, that's true as a nation, and that's true individually. You know, you bless Israel. I've never met anybody who blessed Israel and wasn't blessed. No. I never yeah. met anybody who hated the Jewish people and wasn't cursed. Yeah. Never. Yeah. And, and, I'm, <laughs> and, and, and this, is, this has held up from the days of Egypt to the United yeah. States of America. Yeah. Like clockwork, yeah. our God is real. You know, we, you know, one of the things is we're living in a time yeah. when the world is trying to dismiss God and say, oh, that's old, we, we can move on right. from that. That's one of the reasons I believe this is here because no, God, your God is in charge. The God of the Bible is alive and well. Yeah, and he's right. in charge of everything. That's right, amen. That's what I believe you all for. Amen. Even, even presidents, even presidents. Even American presidents who played a crucial role in the rebirth of Israel, a prophetic role. Yeah. Tell us about when, it. when God, you know, even, even that, when, when, when the Jewish people came back the first time, God had a world ruler, Cyrus, to bless them, to say, go back, to actually bless Jerusalem and come back and rebuild Cyrus. He the let mighty them go. Persian Empire. He let them go home from Babylon, from yeah. their captivity. Well, when God brought them the second time, which was in our, life, in our time, which was even bigger, I mean, it's the whole world, he, did he have a world leader? Well, he did. An unlikely man, a guy who never you never expect, no. but all of a sudden, God raises him from, from almost nothing and makes him the most powerful man in the world, and his name is Harry S. Truman. And, and Harry Truman read the Bible several times as a youth. And one of his best friend was a Jewish man, which God would use years later for Israel to come back into the Amy world. Jacobson. And and yeah, and, and Harry Truman had a love for Israel and he actually defended Israel. Well, you know, if, if FDR, Franklin Roosevelt, had remained in power, it's most likely Israel would not have come back into existence. Yeah. So Roosevelt in his last election decides to lift up this guy, Harry Truman. Yeah. Less than, than 90 days after Truman is sworn in, Roosevelt dies and Truman becomes the most powerful man in the world. And now Truman is gonna follow the mystery of Cyrus. Yeah. He's the first one. Follow the mystery of Cyrus. In fact, you know, you know, first of all, he's going to recognize Israel. He's going to the return. He is instrumental in the UN voting Israel back, just like Cyrus was instrumental. We were the first nation, by the way, if you're in the United States, to recognize the state of Israel, the modern state of Israel. 11 minutes after it was declared. 1948, May 14th. Yeah. Yeah. So I will bless those who, who bless, bless you. you. Hello. And, and when... When did America become a superpower? At that same moment, same moment, same moment. Right. So that all happens. And now, now Truman, not only that, people don't realize, Truman actually first sent the word to the British Empire, let those exiles go back to the land, just like Cyrus did. Yeah. He said, you let them back. And I looked at the day that he said it was a Sabbath, was a Friday, and the day, it was an appointed word. And that, that begins the return. And the appointed word was Moses telling Israel the first prophecy, in that day God will gather you back from all the nations and bring you back to the land. On the exact day. And not only that, after Truman recognized Israel, the chief rabbi, you know, you know, actually, you know, you know, Cyrus, you know, he didn't know what he was doing. He just was doing, and God says, I'm, not using, a believer. I'm using you anyway. And then, but, but Isaiah says, no, Cyrus, God is the one in charge of you. So yeah. Truman also had a Cyrus, I mean, had, a, had a, like an Isaiah in a sense. The chief rabbi of Israel makes a visit to the White House. He sees Truman and he says, Truman, he says, Harry Truman, president, you have been put in your mother's womb for such exact time as that. Wow. He said, that's why. And he start, opens the book and starts reading about Cyrus to him. And, then, and Truman says, was I used by God? And he says, yes. And Truman breaks down and cries in the Oval Office. And he says? Well, okay, years, a little while later. Now, now <laughs> yeah. he's jumping a gun. He's like, no, no. No. It's too so, good. I can't keep it all in. <laughs> Cyrus would sign his inscriptions saying, I am Cyrus. You can find it, I am Cyrus. Years later, Truman says these words, I am Cyrus. And one of the mysteries here is that when God does like one jubilee, he, he prepares the next one and plants the seeds. So when he does one, so he's got one Cyrus 
In the reign of Harry Truman, that Cyrus, the first American Cyrus, is born a child, Donald Trump, the next Cyrus. Born in the wow. year, born in the time of Truman. Amen. That's a nice... That's going to be another mystery. Yeah, that, that's called a teaser in TV, folks. Uh, wow. And folks, do you want more information like this? Groundbreaking, unique, biblical, prophetic information that you just won't hear anywhere else? We would love to send you this book, The Oracle, for a gift of any amount to TBN. This is on its way to becoming a blockbuster. God's grace. We prayed before that this book is going to shake the nations. I believe it's going to have that kind of impact. Okay. We said now we seven go to, doors. Okay, we go, yeah. So now, all right. So now if you go back to the main jubilee that keeps going. We had 1867, 50th year, 1917, restoration. Count, yeah. count 50 years. See, every time there's going to be a restoration of what was lost. That's jubilee. You shall go home. Everyone shall return. So count. 50 years from 1917, it takes you to the year 1967. Anything significant happened that year? Well, remember, when, when, you know, Jesus said, I'm not coming back until the Jewish people say, Baruch haba, blessed is he, in Jerusalem. So they need Jerusalem. You know, and so, but they didn't have Jerusalem when they came back. But God says, I don't care what the UN says. I don't care what the world says. If I said it, I'm going to do it. Yeah. So... Amazing thing, it all's gonna happen, and that year is going to be the year. Israel didn't ask for it, actually. It just came upon them, and Israel enters that year. Jewish soldiers, after 2,000 years, enter the gates of Jerusalem. For everyone shall return home. The owner shall return home. The six-day war. Six-day war comes upon them. And how does it happen? It happens through the, because the Soviet Union, the godless anti-God, anti-Bible, anti-Jesus, Soviet Union, sends a word to the Arab nations false that Israel's going to attack you. That causes the Arab nations to line up to destroy Israel. That brings about the Six-Day War. That brings about Jerusalem. So the Soviet Union brought about biblical prophecy. Wow. And that tells you something. Yeah. If God can use the Soviet Union, he can use any problem yeah. in your life to accomplish his will <laughs> in your life. <laughs> and so, but amazing, you know, in the Bible, a lot of times God gives prophetic songs that a song of prophecy is given, and then it comes true. You see it in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Well, amazing thing. On the 19th anniversary of Israel, they're having a celebration, and a woman sings a song to the nation, and it spreads throughout Israel, and it's a, it's a song of prophecy. The song is called Jerusalem of Gold. Love it. And all of a sudden, Israel is longing for Jerusalem all over. They're all singing a Jerusalem, Jerusalem. On the night that she introduced the song, the Arab, the Egyptian soldiers are lining up on the borders of Israel to invade. And it's going to bring about the Six Day War. So it's all going to come to pass as this as from the song and and by the by the end of that on the end of that war she has to change the end of the song because it was a song of mourning and let, but now at the end it becomes a song of rejoicing well, remember god said to israel when, when they lost jerusalem when they he said he said you know when judgment comes i'm going to turn your rejoicing into mourning yes. but then he says redemption i will turn your mourning into joy yes. so that's exactly what he did that's right and but but Israel didn't know, like, when this was all happening, Israel thought it was going to be destroyed. They start preparing coffins. They start, they start dedicating oh, yeah. the parkland for cemeteries. Digging graves. Digging There's graves. footage of this in old pictures from 1967. They're actually doing that, but they have yeah. no idea that God is at work. You know, right. that he's gonna, so, and, and same with our lives. <laughs> you have no idea, but God is at work. Right. And but the thing is that, so they have a secret meeting of the president, the prime minister, and the military men said, what do we do? And they make the decision. We, he says, if we don't go to war now, we're going to be destroyed. So they make the decision on this day, but that day is the Sabbath. Again. So that means there's an appointed word. The appointed word for that day has the words, go to war. Wow. It's the, it's the time in the Torah where God tells Israel how to prepare for war and to mobilize all the men. That's what they were doing. And they mobilized all the men up to the age of 50, Jubilee. So they had to be born since the last, the last Jubilee. And at the end of the war, the, the, the scripture speaks about getting all the men up to the age of 50. <laughs> the actual thing. God does it. And there's something amazing called the Masada mystery. Masada. Masada. One of my favorite places in Israel. When you visit, not if you visit Israel, when you visit Israel, you must go to Masada. Masada is the last stand of ancient Israel. It's where they died. Yeah. You know, they, they, Jerusalem fell, then Masada fell, and that was the, grew the grave. But, but there, for 2,000 years, there was a mystery hidden on that mountain. God put a, 
a parchment there with a prophecy. For two, and it took 2,000 years for the Jewish people to get back and open it up and be blown away by the prophecy. Now, I can't get into everything, okay? Because I did this on the other, I'm doing this on the other show, but let me, tell, <laughs> let me, let me get into a really amazing thing from Masada. We won't tell anybody. No, of course not. Just millions of people around the world, we promise we'll keep it a secret. Okay, so the thing is that, that you know, when in ancient times, Israel lost Jerusalem, Messiah, Jesus prophesied it, and then a few years later, they lost Masada. Well, if God's reversing this redemption, could, he, could this reverse? That means when Israel returns to Masada to uncover it, that means soon after that, they will return to Jerusalem. Well, the amazing thing, I looked at the, I said, let me look at the exact date when Israel returned to Masada, yeah. when they lost Masada in Asia, when they lost Jerusalem, and take the exact amount of days between that and put it back from the, when they returned to, when they turned to Masada, it's 1,333 days. When you take it back, it comes out to the date of 1967, June, June 7th, the very day Israel opens the gates of Jerusalem, 64, the exact date. Wow. Jonathan, absolutely phenomenal. This is a small sampling, by the way. If you are just joining us, we're in New York City. Amen. And we are talking to the one and only Rabbi Jonathan Kahn about his brand new groundbreaking blockbuster book, The Oracle. This is fun, my friend. And by the way, <laughs> I love yeah, uh, in his spare time, which there isn't a whole lot of, with a newborn, with a new book, uh, Jonathan heads up a wonderful anointed congregation not far from here in Wayne, New Jersey. I, uh, Paul, Paul, it's, 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 it's called Beth Israel, and it's at the Jerusalem Center. We meet on Friday nights, Sunday mornings. It's Jew and Gentile together. And we have people yeah. come around the world to come there. But if you're ever in the area, come by. Please, go. I spoke there recently, folks. My daughters were with me. My daughter, Leah, who's here tonight. And we were at Beth Israel. It was a fantastic weekend, especially for my children, to have them there and to experience Beth Israel Jonathan's congregation. Okay. The, the Jubilee and people, I'll just mention, I mentioned that there that was, was this, my next now, question. Now, now let me show you, now let me, now let me I'll show you. I told you they all began in 1867. There was a ga uh, this, this kind of mystery gathering of Jewish believers. The man who called that gathering, who, was the con who called it all together, was born in 1817. He was 50 years old, and then he calls the, he has the gathering. He's the first one. Wow. In that year, 1867, another man is born, another child is born, and when he turns 50, he will play a central role in the next Jubilee. For 2,000 years, there hasn't been Jewish soldiers in Israel. This man is gonna lead the first Jewish soldiers back to the land in the year of Jubilee. And he's an Irish Christian. And, he, and his name is John Patterson. He actually becomes, he's, and he was born in that Jubilee. He plays it in that one, and he actually becomes the godfather of the, of the Israeli army yeah, the because idea. of him. And, when, and before he dies, he dies in 1947 as Israel is gonna come back, before, he blesses a Jewish family. And that family is the Netanyahu family. Wow. <laughs> Before he died. And there's so much more, but, but. And then when he, so he, 1917, another child is born in that Jubilee who's, rab, who's gonna become a rabbi, Shlomo Goren, and he's gonna be the one to sound the, sho, the shofar, the trumpet in Jerusalem on the day of Jerusalem in that Jubilee when he's yeah. 50 years old. Now there's another person who was born in 1907, but I cannot divulge it until I talk to that person. But very crucial in this, but it goes all the way up to now. Yeah, and, and the, the Six Day War, Jonathan, the way it unfolded, and you unfolded beautifully in the book, the Six Day War to me was proof of God's hand on Israel. Yes. All the cards, all the odds were stacked against oh, yeah. them. Oh yeah. And, and to retake Jerusalem, they didn't expect to retake Jerusalem they, they, in that war. They told the people actually, they said, stay away from Jerusalem. They were afraid yeah. of the world with that. They said, but God just forced it. You know, God yeah. is gonna do it. And notice every Jubilee is leading up to something. It yeah. keeps on building and growing and going to the next one. So yeah, and this is actually gonna lead to the next, we, we could just, there's many mm -hmm. more mysteries of the, but, oh, but this is gonna lead to the next door, which is gonna take it right up to where we are right now. And our president, I believe. Even our president. Yeah, now we have about 30 seconds. Give us a quick teaser, I think this is kind of funny. <laughs> what does the summer of love in 1967, oh. not a really Christian event, what does that have to do with the Oracle? We have about 30 seconds okay. before we're gonna go to your okay. trailer. Okay, quickly, all right, here. When 
2,000 years ago, Israel, uh, Jerusalem was destroyed, and all of a sudden, Jewish believers start vanishing. The, the apostles, the, the time is over, and the yeah. church loses its Jewish roots. So what happens sure. when Jerusalem comes back? That means Jerusalem comes back. It's the, what comes right after that is Jewish people start coming to Messiah like never before, like they're all around the world. And it begins with the summer of love, begins with the Jesus movement, yeah. and, it be, and that begins in June 1967 when Jerusalem is restored. Wow. All these revivals begin when Jerusalem sure. comes back. We could use another one today. Yes, if I might add. <laughs> Take a look right now for more information about this groundbreaking new blockbuster, The Oracle by Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. Check out this trailer. that an ancient mystery lies behind the events of our world, the leaders of our times, and the course of our lives. Could this mystery lie behind everything from world wars, current events, and even an American president? Jonathan Kahn, the New York Times bestselling author of The Harbinger, The Paradigm, and The Book of Mysteries, now brings The Oracle, The Jubilee and Mysteries Unveiled, Embark on an epic journey through seven doors of revelation. The Oracle by Jonathan Kahn. Prepare to be blown away. Wow. <laughs> Folks, I can assure you, you will be blown away. For a gift of any amount, we will send you The Oracle hot off the presses, the latest blockbuster bestseller, by our good friend, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. Okay, we're laying out seven doors. Okay. We are up to door number five. Yes. What is behind it? Okay, well, what it means is, again, every Jubilee, 50th year, something's gonna happen of restoration. One thing that happens during the Jubilee is the legal right to the land is given. You don't just return to your land, you're given the right to the land. But when the Jewish people returned in 1967, the world said, no, we're not gonna recognize it. Only capital in the world, that was not recognized. But the Jubilee says it's gonna be recognized. So count 50 years from 1967, where does it take you? 2017. Anything happen? Yes. The United States of America, for the first time, recognizes Jerusalem, gives them the legal right to the owner of Jerusalem, President Donald Trump. And it doesn't matter, listen, it doesn't matter what you think of Trump, doesn't matter what you thought of Cyrus. The fact is, God can use anyone, and he recognized it, and it, listen, it's the first time, not just in modern times, it's the first time since ancient times that right. any power has recognized Jerusalem in the year of Jubilee, and he did it just before the Jubilee ended. He got it right in there, you know, and not that Donald Trump is studying Leviticus. You know, he just, <laughs> he just, he just did it. Now, but the thing is, there's so many mysteries, and one of the mysteries is, is, is we've heard the Cyrus thing, but it goes so deep, much deeper. First of all, well, Trump is linked to Truman, as we said, he's born yes. there. And the thing is that the thing about, first of all, there, you know, Cyrus, well, one of the things about one of the things about Trump is during in that first year, he actually quotes from King Cyrus. And he actually speaks as Cyrus. People don't realize that. There's a, he did it. But, but he, you know, Truman recognized Israel, but he didn't recognize Jerusalem. Cyrus did. So Trump is gonna recognize Jerusalem. And Cyrus spoke about a house being built. Truman, yeah. Trump spoke about a house in that declaration being built. Wow. And, and Cyrus did it in his first year of world power. Trump did it in his first world, uh, year of world power. Sure. But there's this mystery about 70 years, because the Bible says the king will, will do this, or all these things will happen at the end of the 70 years of captivity. End of 70 years. So was there any 70 year period that's significant that Trump came at the end of? Well, count back 70 years, it takes you to 1947, the year that Israel comes back in the world. Right. Again, 70 years, but I look deeper. And, and, yeah. and the, the, the day that the UN, again, voted Israel to existence, it was nighttime, it was Kislev 17. And, and the Hebrew calendar. And Jeremiah says, it says will happen at the end of 70 years. So you got 70 years and then the day after marks the end. Well, if you go 70 years later, it comes to Kislev 18. Okay. Now what is Kislev? That, so people know Kislev, Kislev is the month and 18 is the, is the day. Gotcha. It takes you to 2017 Kislev 18. What day is it on our calendar? It was December 6th. The exact day that Trump issued that declaration right. at the end of 70 years to the day. December 6th, 2017, when Trump declared the embassy, yes, will move to Jerusalem. The exact day and, and you know, you know, think about the ramifications. Yeah. You, if we were back there in 1947 and we had this, we, we, we knew the mystery. We could say, okay, what this is saying is once Israel is coming back to the world, count 70 years and a world leader will arise. 
and he will issue a declaration concerning Jerusalem. Mm. It had to be. And so when was Trump elected? Trump had to be elected just when he was, because it's going to be in his first year of power, Cyrus. Yes. So the ele American election had to take place when it did, and it had to turn out like it did. Wow. For the 70 year, because the 70 year was approaching. <laughs> the 70 year was approaching. But I, I want to tell you, I got to tell you this. You know, I, I might skip some stuff, but I got I to okay. say this. And, and this one I'm doing on the other one, but I have to do this here because it's just God. Okay. And that is this. Listen, what happens in the year of Jubilee? What happens in the year, year of Jubilee? You sound the shofar, right? You know, you know we know that. That, that signals. The, the shofar must sound. What does the name Trump mean in English? The trumpet. Wow. The trumpet comes to power in the year of Jubilee. Yeah. That, when did he come? 2017. Wow. The trumpet must sound. The yeah. trump must sound. must sound. So God, it's not about him. It's not about the shofar. It's that God has to lift up, you got to lift up the trumpet in the year of Jubilee. The trump's got to be the, and the trump shall sound throughout the land. He has not stopped sounding since, you know. Yeah. <laughs> the trump, I mean, sometimes, you know, the trump, the trump, you know, even tweets a bit, but the trump, yeah. it sounds, you know. And what happens when the trump sounds? What happens when the trump sounds, and when the trump sounds in the Jubilee, year of Jubilee, the land, the, the, the possession returns to the original owner. Mm. So the trump sounded and Jerusalem is recognized for Israel. Yeah. Year of Jubilee, only God. And, and even for that, listen, for that to happen. In the end of 2017. At the end, December just, 6th, he just got in. And, and just the, got in. And, and, and the thing, but you know, God is perfect. You know, yeah. and, oh, yeah. and the thing is that, again, it means that, that all these things were waiting. The election had to turn out and, and a president named Trump had to become the leader oh, yeah. in the year of Jubilee. It's all, all from God. I mean, be, you know, you got... Amazing stuff. So, so, and now, now I can just, there's so much, but, but, and we can go, because it's going the mystery's gonna go into the future. So maybe we wanna try to, we can get a little bit of the sixth I door. I think people like to hear yeah. that, for sure. Okay. Okay. And I can, do, again, I know I'm sad, but like a record, broken record, but there's so You're much. getting so I can, us excited. I, I can just touch on these things. But the, the, the mystery of the Jubilee really is the, the, the secret, really, of the end times. Yeah. Because what is the mystery? It's that everyone shall return to where you left. So it's, the, it's return, return. Yeah. So, so that the mystery of the end times is return. One is that everything has to go back to where it was at the beginning of the age. So you got the Jewish people were in Israel. They got to go back to Israel. They were in Jerusalem. They got to go back to Jerusalem. But the mystery even gets bigger because the whole world is going to follow this mystery of Jubilees. Mm -hmm. The whole world, because this is called the dark Jubilee in the book, in the Oracle. And that is that this. The world 2,000 years ago, at this time when the Jews were in Israel, wasn't Christian, it was pagan, it was anti-Christian, un-Christian, anti-Christian, Rome, it was pagan. Yeah. That means the world in the end is going to return to its anti-Christian state. It's un-Christian, it's pagan state. Not everybody, but the mainstream culture. And so what are we watching every single day? It's the mystery of this return. Every day that the world throws off another thing and say, I don't want, and go, and we're saying, what's going on? It's the return. Everything is being set in motion. It's, a, it's gonna be a rematch at the end, you know? Yeah. You know and, and, but the good news on that, there's another return in the book that I have to say, because that is, it is, where was the church 2,000 years ago? It was in Jerusalem, it was the book of Acts, it wasn't, it wasn't established, it wasn't comfortable, it wasn't rich, it was radical, revolutionary, filled with a spirit, and world changing, and right. history changing. That's right. And what that means is, though we see a great falling away, it means that in the end, God is calling the church to go back home to its original state, which is radical, revolutionary, world changing, spirit filled, and unafraid, bold, uncompromised. So, so even though, even though we're seeing, you know, even though we're seeing all this and we're seeing people fall away and all that, those who stand will be transformed into what they were, the apostles and the disciples. Yeah. That's why Jewish believers are back, because yeah. that's what it was at the beginning. Yeah. You know, the church and, church and Israel were together at the beginning. They haven't been together until now. So it's all coming back. So that's a call for all of us yeah. to rise to that calling. So, and even when persecution comes, listen, there was, it was that way back then. Right. That will help mold us to become the apostles, disciples of God we are called to become. Yeah, wow. Well. It's an exciting time to be alive. Yes. We live in perilous times, but we live in Bible times yes. today. Yes, yes. 
and yes. so people, encouraging. People are praying, you know, I say this all the time, people are always praying, Lord, and many, many you, yeah. I, I wish I lived in Bible times. <laughs> Congratulations, you've arrived. <laughs> right. now, now, oh, now, again, again, we can only, we're only given, be, oh, we're touching doorknobs here yeah. on the doors, but, but I gotta yeah. do this, because it ultimately is about each of us. Yeah. This mystery is about each of us. You know, because what's the mystery? It's about coming home. You know, our whole, you know, in, in this world, we're never at home. And the older you live, the less you're at home, which is weird, because yeah. we're not home. But what is salvation? You see, you know, see, listen, what is the Jubilee? It begins where you're leaving a land, you're leaving a place that you had. Well, look at the beginning of the Bible. We left our home. We left our time with God. We left our place. And so what is salvation? It's Jubilee. It's coming home. It's returning home. What Jesus is our Jubilee. And it's returning home. So he's calling. So every, our whole salvation is Jubilee. Yeah. Our whole, you're, he's, he's calling you to become what you were meant to become from the beginning. Restoration, coming home, all that. And there's, that's why I put in the book, it gets very personal at the end, but also that God wants us to live the power of the Jubilee. You know, if we're seeing God, you know, we're seeing, we're seeing all these things so real. So God of Israel, that means he's your God too, so he's just as real for your life. And if he doesn't forget his promise to Israel, he's not going to forget his promise to you. Yes. And if he's going to, so in the same way, if he's going to restore Israel, he's going to restore you. Yeah. Okay, and, and what is this all leading up to? Missing peace. What the, you know, listen, this all began when it wasn't when just Israel left the land. Someone else left the land. Messiah did. The ultimate jubilee is the king was separated from his kingdom. But the, but the return is saying that the king is coming back yes. to his kingdom. He's returning again, and we need to be ready. And I will, I will just say, you know, and I can just touch it up, but, but there is a seventh door. The seventh door is a mystery, okay, if you do it. Uh, but I will say this, I will say this. When you read the end of the Bible, when you read the end of the Bible, what do you read? The tree of life was gone, now it comes back. Everything was gone, comes back. What, it's, it's coming home. Yeah. What is Jeru what is heaven? It's just like Israel came to Jerusalem, we're coming to Jerusalem. Yeah. And that is the final home. When we come, heaven is the final mystery. That's our ancestral land, that's where we belong. That's where God is calling us. That, when we get to heaven, we're gonna say, we're home for the first time. Yeah. That's what it's all about. And it goes on forever and ever and ever. He's gonna wipe, he's gonna restore, wipe away every tear from our eyes and he, no more death, no more pain, no more mourning. That is the ultimate restoration. It says, and then he will be ours and we'll be his. That's our possession. God is our possession and we are his. Wow. That's how it goes on forever and ever and ever. Yeah. Folks, the book is called The Oracle, The Jubilean Mysteries Revealed. You're hearing Jonathan's incredible insights here, prophetic insights, encouragement as well, giving you a window into what's coming, why it matters to you. For a gift of any amount, we here at TBN would love to send you this book, get it in your hands so you can devour it like I did in a few days. And wow, it's gonna stay with you long after you put it down. This is groundbreaking. It's gonna reach secular folks as well, I think. Pray that, yeah. I really I pray, do. That, that's my hope because if you're not a believer, I mean, I try to write it that. Listen, listen. You, you, you know, a lot of people they just don't know. They hear, yeah. okay, so they don't realize the God that, that they heard about way two thousand years ago yeah. is alive and affecting their life. Yes. Whether whoever you are, it doesn't matter. He's to in the charge date, of everything. To the day, to the election, to your birthday, to, to the your election. Birthday. People are All born there. just for you know at exact times, yeah. and so are we each of us. So yeah. are we as well. Yeah. We were born for this age, yes. and, and this is an exciting time. It's challenging. Yes. But it For could sure. also be the greatest time yeah. because God is alive and well. And to stand with him in these times is worth more than when he's popular. That's right. This is the time where he's going to anoint the eyes of the Lord are searching the entire earth, looking for the one whose heart is completely yes. his. He's going to raise you up. You be that one. He will raise you up. He will anoint you. He yeah. is alive now. And we need to pray for revival yes. because we need to pray for revival. We need revival in America, revival in the world, because if there's not revival, America is down. Right. We need to pray for that, and there can be, but the revival starts with us. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. Without you, we couldn't do it. God bless you.